What's up, gamers? Uh, this is Barnes here. <clears throat> We're driving home from the shop. It's 4th of July. It's already in New York. And uh, somebody's in our town. Had a parade today, but it's doing the festivities over the weekend. And uh, I'm on my way home, so I figured, you know, let me take a back way home. And I'll try to do one of these uh, driving vlog videos here. And this video is going to be about... Uh, well, it's going to be a video response to Mr. Bolt Alt Orange. And the weird thing about this video response is it's going to be like a year and a half late and the video ain't going to be up anymore. I think Bolt has already taken that video down, but he had made a great video a while back about uh, <coughs> Canon in campaign settings and how important is it? How important is it that the golden rules of that campaign setting stay the golden rules of that campaign setting? or the little details of uh, it's officially part of that campaign setting. Um, and I really think that how important Canon is to a uh, game, at first it depends on the setting, you know, so if it's a setting well known by your players or a very popular setting, you better stick to the Canon because uh, your players are going to know. Um, if it's a very popular setting, then it's going to be very easy for them to get information on that setting. So take like a setting like Middle Earth, where there's a ton of Lord of the Rings stuff, you know, out there, and multimedia. That's another thing. Like, it's, it's got Canon can come from multimedia. You know, Star Wars is like that. And uh, <clears throat> when Chris had originally made the video asking how important Canon was, I was uh, I relayed a story about myself running a uh, Star Wars Second Edition that eventually went Second Edition Revised uh, campaign. And which I read like 150 novels, Star Wars expanded universe novels during the course of the campaign. Because <laughs> uh, first it was it was like the the chic in thing to do at the bar I worked at, at the time. Everybody was reading Star Wars novels, and like Star Wars novels, Star Wars expanded universe novels knowledge was in. It was cool to have ex Star Wars expanded universe knowledge at this bar. Um, that's Oasis Cafe in New Paltz. If, and you geeks are wondering. Um, and so I got really into it, you know. And <clears throat> I read a bunch of novels and, you know, in, it, the question is funny itself because in Star Wars, canon's really not all that important to George Lucas. He'll, like, he'll change that. So that's another factor, depending on what campaigning setting you're playing. How important is, is canon to that particular setting? I mean, you know, like the Star Wars expanding universe has changed a few times. He's gone back and changed things. Yoda's green officially now, but he was blue in the screen, you know, uh, in the screen uh, script. In the script, he was he was blue. I read the script. Um, so I, I think it also depends how important canon is to your actual campaign setting. Um, and then how important is it to the players? So if it doesn't bother your players that you know things are different, um, then it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But I do think that there's a line that you can cross. So, for instance, with Star Wars, if the if the Empire was filled with lightsiders, people use lightsiders, of course, and the Rebels were darksiders, we'd have a completely different story. Uh, and I think those are two parts of the Star Wars canon that you can't touch. Uh, you know, that the Rebellion has to be filled with good good people, lightsiders, and the Empire has to be filled with dark side. Otherwise, you just end up with a completely different story. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, those, those things like that are always going to be the essential parts of the story. Like, uh, you change those and you got a different game. I, I do have some notes here. I'm trying to read and drive at the same time. Um, you know, and games that have a lot, like, or settings that have a lot of material, like they'll have movies, they'll have television shows, cartoons, uh, comic books, novels, books, gaming material, etc., etc., etc. I'm getting blind here, coming west to the Catskill Mountains. Oh boy. Alright. <clears throat> I can see you again. Um, so the more material it is, the more canons are going to be out there. And, you know, like with Star Wars, some of it is official and some of it isn't an official canon. Uh, but it all says Star Wars on it, so I don't know. But, um, that can get tricky, you know. If there's going to be a cartoon, that, you know, maybe like you have some younger players. So it also exposed, I guess what I'm trying to say is that 
depends like what canon like your players have been exposed to you know so like in Star Wars most people have seen the movies you know, at least gonna check to play Star Wars at least seen a couple but maybe there's some reason unbeknownst to God they haven't seen the movies and they've only read the novels or the comic books so there's a possibility where you know people could have different knowledge of what is canon um, or what the canon is <clears throat> so I think that's worth uh, mentioning now, I think canon is fairly important. It sets the tone, the feeling. Um, it details the world for you. It has, and those little subtle details sometimes you might not expect. Like, is there eight in Huttonese? E's? Is there the number eight in Huttonese? E's? No, there's not. But if you played a game where, you know, a hut count to eight, how many people would catch that? Uh, so. You know, I'm just kind of babbling out this time, babbling, you know. But the more popular setting, the more important canon is going to be, or the, the more well known by your players, the more you know important canon is going to be. Popular settings like, you know, the Doctor Who game or uh, Star Trek. Um, what is it called? Prime Directive. I think it's the role playing game. I think people use Traveler a lot for Star Trek too. Um, there's a lot of material for Star Trek, and I mean, there's people out there speaking different languages you know like they're literally speaking a different language so you know so if you're playing prime directive you know is someone going to be uh speaking in a different language like are they going to be speaking in klingon the whole time because i know i know there's people out there that speak klingon but uh i'm speaking a little bit um <clears throat> i don't think that you I, I would get annoyed if someone was speaking klingon and i don't understand it i'm not going to try to learn klingon Maybe I would, but I, I think there's just more important languages I would try to learn first rather than Klingon. Um, so I, I think stuff like that, like if you're playing Klingon, one of those games, and speaking in that language might be a little bit much. Like if you're playing in Middle Earth and somebody's playing an elf and they speak Tolkien's elven, Tolkien's elven language, I think that's too much. I mean, that's canon you can ignore, you know. So uh, there's a line, I think, for every group. And there's a line within the setting on, on what you're going to pay attention to. Because if you don't pay attention to some things, it's just going to completely change, completely change the, the feeling of the setting. And, uh, you know, that's going to have adverse effects down the line. You're going to have to keep making stuff up. You know, so... Also, if you make stuff up, you might have to adjust it. You know, if you make some, something up, you might have to figure out some way to fit that in, why it makes sense later on down the line. Um, also, another thing about Canada is it's best settings. Like, it's not uncommon for people to learn more about the setting while they're playing. So, you know, you can adjust while you go. Um, it's again, this is these are role-playing games, and there's, you know, the golden rule is like you make the rules, but you have to follow along the lines to at least make the game feel as if it's in that world, I believe. Uh, and you have to touch upon the quintessential parts of that uh, setting. Um, whatever the key parts and uh, key details of that setting you have to keep otherwise it'll change the setting um, but beyond that you know I don't think it matters if you know Han Solo's pants have a Carillion blood stripe down the side I don't think that matters you know or whatever or I don't think I don't think you need to speak Elvin if you're playing Middle Earth or you know Tolkien's Elvin or you know speaking Klingon um, so that's pretty much my thoughts on canon it's really where your group finds this, you know, comfortability with and everyone's comfortable with and it makes sense. Like, you know, and some groups that might not, you know, somebody might have to compromise. They might have to know, they might maybe, maybe they know way too much about it, the setting. And they're going to have to deal with a couple things that just aren't quite right, you know. Um, so having a group that has the same knowledge about the setting depends how important the setting is too because... You know, you all have a general feel of what what is what it means to be playing in the Star Wars universe, and what it means to be playing in Dune or uh, you know Middle Earth or whatever it is, whatever have you. Um, I think it's important and a great tool for the dungeon master and or game master if he has more knowledge in the setting than his players. Period. It's a tool that you can use while you're game master. It's going to give you more details about the world and more details to present to your players and different things to play off in the game. 
Um, so if you're going to run a you know a game that's set in a Pacific setting, I suggest you do a little bit of research because I really feel it's important for the game master to have more knowledge about the campaign setting. It's not essential, you know, it depends from group to group, but I think it's a great tool to have in your toolbox if you do. Um, it really worked for me, and that was one of my more memorable campaigns. Um, fortunately, it lasted a while, so I had a little bit more time to remember it. But um, yeah, those are my you know feelings about canon and RPGs. Um, I think I cover them all. You know, you just got to find that level of comfortability with your group that they enjoy, uh, that makes the game interesting and exciting for them. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, Happy 4th, and Bolt, I'm sorry about the late response. Later, y'all. I'm going to try to figure out how to turn this off now and drive at the same time.